when you first write a song uh, and then record it, it's usually in the same period. That day, you may have written the song, and then you record it. So it's like a first date. You know, it's kind of exciting, but you don't know much about that entity. Whereas if you sing that song night after night, week after week, year after year, decade after decade, that relationship becomes much more rich, much more mature. You know that entity better than anyone else. And so my relationship with these songs is that. It's a long-term relationship. Songs are living, breathing organisms. And every night I breathe oxygen into those organisms. And I'm rewarded for that. I always try and find something new, something I haven't tried before within the song. And listeners may not understand that or get that, but I'm looking for that. And so, you know, now, after 40 years of singing Roxanne, I now have a, a richer voice. What surprises me is how contemporary the songs feel. They don't sound like they're from the olden days. They sound modern. And I, I play, I've been playing through Europe this summer um, to an audience that is very, very mixed. Uh, people my age, people, you know, very, very young, male and female, and they seem to be responding to the songs in the same way. So the songs are clearly alive. So that makes me happy. You have to make a decision every day. You turn to the left or you turn to the right. And if I look back and say, well, I made a decision here to turn to the left and not to the right, my life would have completely changed and every day would have been that way for the band. So when I look, when I do look back, I feel grateful that I seem to have made the right choices every time there was a fork in the road. Um, so I have no regrets. <laughs> I only have gratitude that those choices were made and they were the correct ones. If we had a style that was by accident, uh, and our concern was really about music. So it, we, we weren't thinking visually. Uh, it was only later, with the, the rise of MTV in America, where we realized we had to present ourselves in a much more visual way, uh, that we started to think about it. But at, at, at first, no, I was just a musician. Uh, my mother was a musician. Um, I was educated by her record collection. So she played classical music, she played music from Broadway shows, she liked pop music, she brought rock and roll into the house. So I was exposed to everything without any prejudice. And then I became interested in black music and in blues, in jazz, in rhythm and blues, R&B, uh, soul music, and then reggae. And so, you know, Britain was very much uh, a good place to grow up in, in, among music because we were exposed to all of that. Uh, the Beatles came from Liverpool, which is a very similar town to Newcastle. And they did something really unique in pop music because they wrote their own songs. And before that, Elvis Presley never wrote his own songs. Frank Sinatra never wrote his own songs. The Beatles were really the first people to do that. And the fact that they were from a similar background to me gave my generation permission to try the same thing. So I owe my uh, life to the Beatles, without a doubt. And rather than obeying the rules of what should be a hit, my preference was to have a hit record against the grain, you know, something that's counterintuitive. Um, I think the, the first police songs were a combination of rock and roll and reggae at a time when reggae wasn't terribly well known in the world. I mean, we weren't really playing reggae, it was a homage to reggae, but the hybrid that we created was very original, it was, that was our sound. Um, but you know, when you have a hit, it's just lucky. But after you've been lucky, you have to get smart, <laughs> quickly.